Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of residents and businesses for more than 100 years. PSENG, we make things work for communities. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. This is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello and thanks for joining us on air and online. I'm Brianna Venosi in for Mary Alice Williams. A reminder, our studio is closed, but we will be here every day to bring you the latest news and information, though that format may look different than our normal over the coming weeks. We too are working under the COVID-19 restrictions. The number of coronavirus cases continues to rise dramatically. The latest update from state leaders today reports 89 new cases of the COVID-19, putting our total at 267 with three deaths. These cases are now in 15 out of 21 counties, the youngest case just five years old. To put this in perspective, as recently as 11 days ago, New Jersey had just one case in one county. This as residents begin the first day of extensive social distancing measures to help flatten the curve and stop the spread. The governor said today this is no time to panic, but community transmission is still a concern. Here's a little bit from today's press briefing. Follow up. We have received an additional 89 positive test results. Our statewide total is now 200 and 67. And we had announced, I believe, last evening our third fatality. Uh, and clearly, this is a, an evolving reality. And Judy will get into the details, including the, the, the demographic and geographic details um, in a few moments. In many respects, this is day one of life in New Jersey under the measures we put in place yesterday to ensure social distancing and to help flatten the curve and slow the spread of coronavirus. And again, as I said yesterday, we've said many times, the extent to which we can, through social distancing, flatten the curve over here, we take the pressure off the healthcare system over here and save lives uh, and health in the process. I wanna thank everyone who has taken to heart the need to stay in after 8 p.m. We need all New Jerseyans to follow your lead. Uh, binge watch something, play a game with your family, call family members or neighbors to make sure they're doing okay, particularly the elder, elderly among us. But please just stay in after 8 p.m. We urge you to do this for among other reasons so that essential personnel can attend to their jobs. For example, we must allow truck drivers to be able to make deliveries for restocking our grocery stores or getting supplies to our frontline healthcare responders. Truckers are essential workers in our response and we tip our cap to them. And the same goes for the members of the media who are essential to getting the facts and resources out to the public and for that, we thank you. If there is no reason to go out, however, don't go out. Let the people we need to be out get their jobs done. Earlier today, and I, I've been speaking regularly with fellow governors and spoke to Governor Cuomo this morning along with Mayor de Blasio and exchanged notes with Governor Wolf, and this is a constant uh, neighborhood watch, if you will. In response to a request from uh, Governor Cuomo, President Trump said the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers would be, and I quote the president, ready, willing, and able to help stand up temporary hospitals. So to ensure our greater regional preparedness, I have now sent a letter to President Trump and have put a call into Vice President Pence making this request for New Jersey as well, that we are in that first wave of response. This move would be prudent to expand capacity and alleviate the strain on our hospitals and so we can both properly cope with this public health emergency and ensure the continuity of care for other emergencies. And by the way, again, what we do over here in terms of flattening the curve and social distancing, 
we believe increases our likelihood dramatically that we'll take pressure off the health care system over here. But we can't take that for granted, which means we have to do and both. We've got to, we've got to flatten the curve, social distancing aggressively over here, but over here we've got to make sure we have enough capacity because we think this is right. We have a high degree of confidence, but this is a virus unlike anything we've ever seen in our lifetime, and we want to make sure that we have belt and suspenders, if you will. I also want to make uh, it evident that we understand that county and local governments are focused on their own concerns. In certain circumstances, it may make sense for certain localities to take actions relating to those unique concerns. We are very mindful of these actions and are reviewing them individually, in fact, to ensure that they are fully aligned with our statewide guidance. Where necessary, we will support these actions. But where also necessary, we will override them. We ask county and local officials to coordinate closely with us prior to making any local directive. And again, there's no doubting everybody's heart's in the right place, but we have to do things in a coordinated fashion. And at the end of the day, where necessary, we will override local or county actions to make sure that we are consistent in our approach. Further, I am directing effective 8 p.m. tonight the closure of all indoor shopping malls, amusement parks, and amusement centers across New Jersey until the current emergency ends. Restaurants which are located within these indoor malls and which also have their own entrances separate from the general mall entrances may remain open under the same rules and regulations we announced yesterday for restaurants and bars, which is takeout or delivery only. Let me be clear that outside of our indoor malls, other businesses specifically ordered to shut down or the restaurants and bars which are limited to providing that takeout or delivery services only, all other non-essential retail, recreational, and entertainment businesses may remain open until 8 p.m. if they abide by our social distancing guidelines, and that's a big if. This is how we will be able to stay strong throughout this emergency and how we will emerge from it stronger and more prepared for the long term. Now, for residents who are out of work as a result of this emergency, help is available. Workers who, whose place of employment has closed or whose hours have been cut as a result of this merge emergency are in all likelihood eligible to receive either full or partial unemployment insurance, unemployment insurance benefits, pardon me, for however long they will be either out of work or working fewer hours. We saw a record number of unemployment insurance applications or so-called UI applications, Rob, yesterday so many, in fact, that the state system uh, crashed. Uh, you're back, which is good news. We are asking the federal government for assistance in ensuring every application is properly received and handled. Additionally, New Jersey already has among the nation's strongest and best laws as they pertain to guaranteed paid sick leave and expanded paid family leave. Both of these laws are here for precisely situations like this. I urge every resident whose job has been directly impacted to visit nj.gov slash labor. That's nj.gov slash labor. A link to a comprehensive page pertaining to available benefits is prominent on the department's landing page. Commissioner Asaro Angelo will address this in a few moments in more detail. And when it, when it comes to our union brothers and sisters impacted by this emergency, I also thank all the leaders of organized labor who are working alongside us to get the word out to their members and who are helping them and their families get through this time. We also know that the anxiety is high among New Jersey business owners, in particular among small businesses, which are the backbone of our economy. Small businesses, Rob, in the aggregate, I believe, employ about 60% of uh, the workforce in the state of New Jersey. Our entire economic team from my office to the Economic Development Authority is currently working alongside the federal 
Small Business Administration to ensure that available financial relief can flow into New Jersey as quickly and efficiently as possible. Our full application to the Small Business Administration for disaster loan assistance was submitted this morning, and we are pushing to get that approval as swiftly as possible, as early as, fingers crossed, today. We are also working to ensure continuity of operations for ongoing construction projects. In addition, we are working with our partners in the legislature in hopes of standing up a state business assistance program within the coming week. And I want to go out of my way again to thank our colleague, colleagues in the legislature. Uh, I've spoken to both the speaker last evening, the Senate president this morning, and uh, to each of them, their teams, and all the legislators. We cannot thank you enough for your passion and willingness to support uh, the, the, the folks in our state who need that help the most in this very trying time. So take, I take my hat off to them. Today is the last day New Jersey schools are allowed to be open before Governor Murphy's executive order to close them goes into effect. More than a million students preparing to learn at home. Teachers spent the day finalizing plans for remote learning, while parents spent the day scrambling, preparing to keep their kids home for at least two weeks. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports. I woke him up. Hey guys, let's go. Following the coronavirus contingency plan, parents like Don Haynes picked up bag lunches and breakfast for kids at Quitman Elementary. More than two thirds of the district's 38,000 students rely on school for meals and daily food distribution make sure everyone eats. But it's the remote learning component that changed routines for Don's three daughters. Yesterday was my first time like actually in the whole my homeschool mind frame and it was awesome. It gave me time to spend with them. And I got to see what their teachers deal with, how short their attention span actually is. Haynes says she's fortunate the district provided a Chromebook and teachers walked them through how to use it. But Becky Hall's second grader is among the district's 10,000 students with no internet access. A lot of the kids here ain't, don't have computers at home and laptops and stuff. So online learning for even them is hard. The district sent home two weeks worth of paper homework designed to keep kids up to speed and focused on learning. Hall would like a laptop and more oversight from teachers to help kids through the material. But they're still learning. They got pick books, they got little projects in the packets, math, science, reading. It's one thing in a classroom setting to ask 34 students to raise their hands to see if they got it. It's another thing to handle with 34 or 35 different emails a day. You know, they'll, they'll, they will get to it. The Newark Teachers Union says some teachers are stuck working from home while their own kids do online learning there, even though daycare centers throughout New Jersey have remained open during the coronavirus shutdowns. Across the state, 1.4 million students will participate in remote learning by tomorrow. Newark superintendent says the district's monitoring and teachers will still submit reports. We um, are monitoring and adjusting very well to to our realities today. All are clear that this is not a vacation. And the work that teachers would normally do and the supervision of that work all occurs virtually. Newark is working on additional lesson plans, the superintendent says. If this shutdown goes beyond two weeks, they'll need a longer term strategy. In Newark, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. The state is planning to open two large-scale coronavirus testing sites in Bergen and Monmouth counties. Both are supported by FEMA, and Governor Murphy says they can handle up to 2,000 people a day. Until then, private medical systems are working to set up their own to help stop the spread. Michael Hill was at one of the state's first drive through coronavirus testing sites in Sea Caucus. This is a coronavirus test kit. This is a coronavirus test swabbing inside the nose. This is a drive through coronavirus test site in Secaucus, but only for patients of Riverside Medical Group, all outdoors and under tents. Doing it outside prevents uh, contamination of any of the offices. Dr. Iyad Baker says Riverside follows CDC guidelines to determine who gets tested. Riverside screens patients first by phone to see if they've traveled to and from certain areas, if they've been exposed to someone infected, and if they have a fever or shortness of breath. Once confirmed that the patient does qualify for the COVID-19 testing, 
They're um, uh, centralized here in this location. Here, after a flu test and one for strep throat, the medical team coaches a child through a COVID-19 test. So one, two, three, inside your nose. Go inside, 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 inside. The other, the, the other hole. You have to go inside. You have to help me go inside. Thank you. That's all. Great job. The swab goes on ice and then to a lab for testing. Results expected in four days. So the fact that they qualify for that test, um, until we get those test results back, they're self-quarantining. Dr. Baker says this drive-through COVID-19 testing began on Friday. And with more test kits, if necessary, this operation could easily serve many more in the public. The response has been quite good. Um, we've been able to get approximately, as of today, about 88 tests done. Um, and now we're waiting to uh, get the results for a couple of them. Thus far, a lot of the tests have been coming back negative. Um, but as I said, the, the key to this is to be able to get as many test kits as possible um, and screen as many uh, New Jerseyans as we can. Screenings to avoid what's happening at the epicenter of New Jersey's outbreak. Holy Name Medical Center has 20 patients admitted with COVID-19, eight of them in critical condition. We're also beginning to see the virus affect the kidneys, and we're seeing patients go into kidney failure who need dialysis, and we're seeing the virus affect the heart, and patients are having cardiomyopathy and heart failure as well. Michael Hill, NJTV News. Governor Murphy is urging residents to stay home between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., but he hasn't officially mandated a statewide curfew, not yet. Three towns in Hudson County are implementing a curfew, West New York, Union City, and Hoboken. Senior correspondent David Cruz takes us inside the first night of Hoboken's curfew. It was business as usual just a few nights ago in Hoboken bars. But effective last night at 10 p.m., all that changed. This was Hoboken last night, a virtual ghost town as the city imposed the 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, affecting every bar, restaurant, and person in the city. Saturday night, we experienced a, a normal, typical Saturday for Hoboken, and people were congregating together. And if we can help assist with isolating people and helping separate them, that's pretty much public safety. The idea is to discourage any kind of group activity. If you're out walking, even at midnight, cops are probably going to let you do your thing. We're not a police state. We're not, we're not enforcing things like that, but we're going to recommend. We're going to explain what the process is. We're going to be diplomatic. Mondays are generally a pretty quiet time in the bar and restaurant business. Still, in Hoboken, you can always find a place to get a beer or a bite. Except tonight, as you can see, it's pretty quiet. The iconic Malibu Diner, usually open 24 hours and buzzing around this time, now closed. No late night falafel from Mamoons, no Mickey D's run, and no partying on this usually hot stretch of downtown where you will not be able to hashtag shake it baby for the foreseeable future. On the west side, a quiet residential street anyway, it feels like a snow day. You know, by and large, this is a very young yep. Yep. Uh, town. Yep. Uh, a lot of people who are well off, um, who have this kind of sense of invincibility, right? Yeah. I mean, what's the message? No, I, I think uh, we're not invincible. I think the latest uh, uh, positive case today was a 20-year-old from Hoboken. We have a lot of seniors in our town as well that we don't see them all the time, but they're here amongst us too. So you have to take care of them because they're the most vulnerable of this. The first night of the new curfew was mostly uneventful. Compliance was high and service calls low. But spring and summer are coming. Residents here will have their patients tested by tough measures meant to control the spread of a virus that knows no restrictions. In Hoboken, I'm David Cruz, NJTV News. U.S. Senator Cory Booker is among a growing group of Democrats who want to send U.S. families cash to help them through this pandemic. We caught up with Booker via FaceTime as he waits a vote on emergency relief legislation. There's a number of proposals floating around. What are you proposing to help your constituents here in New Jersey? Well, we're proposing a massive package. This is going to be an economic event like we've never seen for affecting all areas of New Jersey's economy. And so first and foremost, we've got to get resources to our hospitals, medical professionals, and there's a lot in that to deal with everything from Medicaid to helping hospitals get the equipment that they need. 
we need to make sure we're dealing with paid family leave, social security, unemployment insurance, child care, foods aid. So there's a whole bunch of things in that package we're supporting. Uh, but in addition to that, I've joined with a few other senators in calling for large cash payments uh, to folks as well. We have so many workers out there that are having added costs, people that are not going to be covered even necessarily by unemployment insurance. That means so often children, college students, people that work in the gig economy, the self-employed. So we want to make sure, number one, that all areas of this crisis, from our small businesses that are going to be struggling to our hospitals are being covered. But we also want to put money in the pockets of people to help them. Not all, not the wealthy, not folks that don't need it, but make sure that we're getting money in the pockets of people that during this economic downturn that we're anticipating that they have those resources. Senator, a lot of businesses and local governments have been looking to the federal level for some guidance. Yesterday, President Trump said on a scale of 1 to 10, he'd rate his response a 10. What do you say? Um, look, I'm not getting into the political pointing. I think there's a lot that this president should have done so much better. He's been behind the curve. It wasn't even until just days ago that he was admitting that this was a problem. He was calling it a democratic hoax. But this is not a time for politics. It's not a time for tearing people down. It's a time for us to pull together and get things done for our state. I am working across the aisle like I've been doing a lot to deliver for New Jersey right now, to build a consensus that will help New Jersey small businesses, help medical professionals, help our, our families that are struggling, help those that are being laid off in our state as we speak. We have got to pull this country together, and everybody's got to be elevating each other in every way they can. Well, let me ask you, do you have some words of encouragement? Because rightly, um, folks are concerned about an unknown future right now. What are your words of encouragement for them? Well, my words of encouragement is we in Jersey, we are Jersey strong. We have seen challenges from 9-11 to even stories from my grandparents about how this country pulled together through a Great Depression, through World War II. We are a nation that has seen crises, a mammoth crisis but we have pulled together. That is our history. That's our grit. That's our strength. And this is one of those times, New Jersey, where we got to be there for each other, extend grace and kindness and support. We will get through this. Tougher days are coming, but together, by being conscientious, disciplined, and kind, we will get through this and emerge out of it uh, even stronger and more resilient. Okay, Senator Cory Booker, thank you so much for joining us from D.C. We really appreciate your time, and you stay safe as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And you heard U.S. Senator Cory Booker talk about a bipartisan effort at the federal level to support families affected by the coronavirus. That tops today's business news. Rhonda Schaffler has more. Brianna, efforts are picking up in Washington to try to get some sort of economic stimulus plan as the COVID-19 outbreak continues to impact the economy. The Trump administration and Congress working to hammer out details on a fiscal stimulus package that could come close to or exceed $1 trillion. This is money to help businesses and also workers and families. In fact, one idea that is being considered is actually sending every American adult a check for $1,000. There is also the possibility Congress could extend the time you are able to collect unemployment benefits. This is something that has been done in the past due to economic uncertainty. Now here in Jersey, as more of us practice social distancing and do more online, some grocery stores are reporting their delivery services are getting a bit backed up Amazon also is making some changes. It's prioritizing delivery services for household staples, medical supplies, and other high demand products. It is suspending temporarily shipments of all non-essential products. Amazon also looking to immediately hire 100,000 people to help with the delivery needs. Meantime, at least one grocery store chain in New Jersey that Stop and Shop is offering special seniors only shopping hours. That is from 6 a.m. to 7.30. If you are venturing out, you'll notice that gas prices have fallen. That's because oil prices have been falling in the midst of this downturn. On average in New Jersey, gas prices have fallen eight cents since last week. They are averaging about $2.36 a gallon. Turning to Wall Street, the Trump administration says there is a commitment to keep financial markets open, even if hours might eventually have to be shortened. On Wall Street at midday, stocks were attempting to recover from Monday's big sell-off. I'm Rhonda Schaffler, and those are your top business stories.
If you have any questions or concerns about the coronavirus, its symptoms, or how to treat it, you can call New Jersey's coronavirus hotline. The number's on your screen. It's 1-800-222-1222. And you can find all the latest reporting and resources for tackling the coronavirus, like fact sheets, a list of symptoms, and phone numbers to call on a special section of our website. Just head to njtvnews.org slash coronavirus for updated information. And again, we urge you to use those resources if you have questions or need help. We are all in this together. And we'll continue to keep you updated online at njtvnews.org. I'm Brianna Venosi. For our entire team, thank you for being here. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. And Orsted, committed to the creation of a new long-term, sustainable, clean energy future for New Jersey. Have some water. Look at these kids. How are you? What do you see? I see myself. I became an ESL teacher to give my students what I wanted when I came to this country. The opportunity to learn, to dream, to achieve a chance to belong and to be an American. My name is Julia Toriani Crompton and I'm proud to be an NJEA member.